This is the Barbados Today Afternoon News for Thursday, August 31st. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Police are investigating an incident in St. Peter this morning where three women were reportedly injured in a cutlass attack. The incident occurred in Roadview. On arrival at the scene, police discovered two females suffering from injuries suspected to be slash wounds or cuts. They were taken to QEH for the ambulance and we are in the process of conducting investigations and will continue to monitor the progress of the victims. There's a male suspect who reportedly left the scene and is being sought by the police. We are in the process of positively identifying that suspect and we are made to understand that he is known to both of the victims. Anyone who can help with information of this incident are asked to contact the nearest police station or the police emergency number at 211 police hotline at 429-8787. In other news this afternoon, Barbados is hosting representatives from port authorities in Latin America and the Caribbean. Participants say security matters and the port's contribution to economic development in those countries are some of the main issues being discussed. Ports and port operations are of pivotal importance to all our member states as they facilitate national, regional and global trade. The focus of the SIP, therefore, is to fa facilitate and promote the development of competitive, sustainable, and secure ports in the Americas. The Guild of Students at the University of the West Indies Cave Hill campus is delivering on a promise to help students who are struggling to pay tuition fees. Guild President Kyle Bridgewater tells Barbados today they will absorb the fees of at least 50 students. Local students are complaining that they have been struggling to meet the costs since government stopped subsidizing tuition fees four years ago. And following an announcement of a hike in fees in May, Bridgewater pledged to assist several students in the new academic year. What we have done is restructured our tuition grant program to ensure that at least 50 students will have the increase in the tuition fees absorbed by the Gila students. So if they, if they show that they're in need, the Gila students will pay that for them. Okay. That's one. Um, two, we are we created seven Gil scholarships for the first time, which is to reward students who are are achieving excellence with both inside and outside the classroom. Now we have five scholarships, one for each faculty for academic excellence. Additionally, we have one for excellence in, a, in sporting activity, in any sporting and recognized sporting discipline, as well as providing welfare. Um, we already had a welfare program, and we've committed more funds to this welfare program to ensure $15,000 to this welfare program to ensure that students in need of groceries, they're having a hard time buying groceries, rent, can come to the Guild office, and we'll make sure that they're accommodated. And it's confidential, of course. Government is being warned not to ignore the issue of de-risking, even as it struggles to improve the island's fragile economy. That warning comes from overseas tax compliance experts who caution that if the matter is put on the back burner, the tourism industry and other sectors could suffer. De-risking is the term being used for the termination of business relations or the severing of correspondent banking to minimize the risks of money laundering and terrorism financing. President and CEO of Foodman CPAs and Advisors, Stanley Foodman, says sectors of the economy could be severely impacted if Barbados fails to save its institutions from de-risking. With respect to de-risking, the impact on the, on, on the local economy is, for example, if you were not self-sufficient in food supply, you might have trouble bringing in food supplies. If you don't have, if you, if you import all of your medicines and medical supplies, that could be impacted. Tourism in and of itself, the numbers of flights could slow down or, or be decreased. It is an issue that can permeate and affect every sector of the, of the Barbados economy. And I, think, and I think it's important to keep that in mind. And economist Jeremy Stevens says it appears that over the, over the last few months, Barbados has become relaxed in tackling the threats and issues related to de-risking and the Foreign Exchange and the Foreign Accounts Tax Compliance Act, or FATCA, to focus on issues relating to public financing.
There's regional and international news after this short break. We are the Tridents, we run it down. Everybody know we're the body so wrong. Anything test, we will throw that down. Come in, Peter, and tell me how we sound. Yes, we're ready to talk in the truth. When we walk up there, they have to salute. Boy, when we put on the Tridents suit, we put everybody from you. Thank you for staying with us. We're back with news from the region. Weather forecasters are keeping an eye on Hurricane Irma. The storm is still out in the Atlantic and is located about 1,845 miles east of the Leeward Islands. At 11 o'clock this morning, the center of Irma was located near latitude 16.9 degrees north and longitude 33.8 degrees west. Irma is moving toward the west-northwest near 10 miles per hour and is expected to continue on this path through early Friday, followed by a generally westward motion on Saturday. The maximum sustained winds have increased to near 100 miles per hour with higher gusts. The Miami-based National Hurricane Center says Irma is forecast to develop into an extremely dangerous hurricane over the next several days. Over in Trinidad and Tobago, the issue of crime comes under the microscope as regional and international law enforcement officials gather for the Caribbean Security Forum. Criminologist Rene Cummings says homicides continue to plague the Twin Island Republic and there is serious need for discussions on the way forward. We get more in this report from TV6 News. Violence in TNT in its various and sometimes intricate forms. School, sexual, gun, gang, domestic, and the list goes on. It begs the question, according to Cummings, when did a country as a people become so violent? It may be reversible, but she says several points must line up first, such as public trust and law enforcement. And it's about transparency in law enforcement, and it's about accountability, and it's about integrity and ethics. And we are not seeing um, those types of changes. And why are we not seeing that? Because it's about moral courage, and it's about political will. And we are not getting that from the leadership in our country. Cummings says while homicides can be isolated as the main tool for casting dark shadows over the country, there must be a wider perspective and approach relating to overall crime. There is no national policy to reduce violence. So it is very important for us to start to design the kinds of criminal justice policies that are necessary. There is no national policy that speaks to homicide reduction. Cummings says there must be a serious review of the criminal justice system, and former congressman and attorney general of California, Dan Lundgren, agrees. He says an unprecedented holistic reform of the criminal justice system in his state was the catalyst for a drastic decrease in crime. On the international scene, at least 21 people were killed this morning when a 117-year-old condemned building collapsed in the Indian financial hub of Mumbai. We get the details in this Reuters report. Survivors have been rushed to hospital. According to authorities, nine families lived in the six-story building, which sat between narrow streets in a densely populated area where some buildings are nearly 100 years old. This building was a part of a cluster of buildings that were up for redevelopment and local authorities had declared the building dilapidated. Some residents had moved out, but many residents were still staying there who were unsure of the redevelopment process in the future. It's the second collapse in Mumbai in just over a month and comes as the city's recovering from deadly flooding that's killed more than a dozen people this week. Experts say two days of heavy monsoon rain may have weakened the building. That takes us to the end of the news this afternoon. For more, you can visit our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also find us on Mix 96.9 FM. I am Marie-Claire Williams. Have a good afternoon.